Hi. In this tutorial, we will cover the Smart Mask Setup dialog. The dialog is part of a tool that generates and connects data to Smart Masks. Smart Masks are complex masks that take the surface of your model into account. For Smart Masks to run correctly, we need to generate and embed some information into your Mari project, which is where the dialog comes in. I will cover the tool in a node graph context. However, it has exactly the same behaviors when the masks are used in the layer stack as well. The setup dialog will appear the first time you use a smart mask in your project. So if I import a smart mask from my mask shelf, the dialog will pop up. At its core, the dialog needs an amine occlusion and a curvature map to connect to the smart masks. It will then proceed to generate some data of the curvature map to also connect to the smart masks. At the very core, all you need to do is provide an amine occlusion and a curvature map in the Baked Maps section. You then click Process and let the tool do its thing. The second time you import a smart mask into your project, you will not be confronted with this dialog. So just importing the mask makes it ready to use. Before we study the setup dialog, let's take a look at how we can generate the Baked Maps required for smart masks to work correctly. As mentioned before, you need at least an amine occlusion in a curvature map for smart mask to work correctly. In this example project, I already have these maps baked. You can access this project by going to the help section and using the create smart mask project. This will create a new project in your projects window, which looks like this and already has these maps baked. To generate amine occlusion in your own projects, we have multiple ways available in Mari. The first one can be found under the Objects tab and is called simply Amine Occlusion. This is a vertex-based Amine Occlusion, so it depends on the density of your model. Now the Amine Occlusion has been generated, and if I create a new channel, and let's call this Mari AO, I'm going to go to the Layer Stack, or I could also use the Node Graph, and generate an Amine Occlusion node. So I'm going to tab and press Amine Occlusion. Let me view this. So this is the vertex-based amine occlusion. So in this case, this would be totally sufficient because it looks nice enough. However, depending on your model, this might not be a good option. Another way to generate amine occlusion is to use the Modo Render Palette. Under the Bake section, we have a Bake preset called AO. If you use this, you can generate an amine occlusion at the resolution of your choice and Mario will create a new channel accordingly. The last option is to simply import an amine occlusion that is was baked in another application, such as Substance. So I'm going to create a new channel again and call this Imported AO. I want to make sure this channel is on linear, raw data, and scalar. Any amine occlusion is always a linear data conversion, so you should always make sure that it's linear. And also on import, we also want to make sure it's a linear channel. I'm going to go to my channel and choose Import into New Layer. I select my amine occlusion and make sure it's on raw or linear. Let's set this to linear and import all patches. And this is my baked occlusion that was baked out of substance. Next, we need to get a curvature map. A curvature map can again be imported from another application, such as substance. So I'm going to create a new channel and call this Curvature Substance. I'm going to set this to 16-bit and again make sure it's a scalar channel. So we have to set this to linear or raw. Let's go to our import and import into new layer and select the curvature. Make sure the color space is on raw or linear and import. And here we are. If it looks like this, you are all good. However, if it's a bit brighter, then you have not set your channels to be linear and the import was also not linear. So always make sure your midpoint is actually a 0.5 value. You can also generate this inside of Mari. Again, we can go to the Modo Render Palette, and in here we have a Curvature High Pass preset if you're on Mari 4.5 or Mari 4.2. And if you're on Mari 4.6, we have a Curvature preset that ships by default with Mari. So this one is exactly the same as the Curvature High Pass, so you can use it there and bake this. If you're on Mari 4.6, we have an even more convenient option. Create a new channel. Again, make sure this is on raw data. 
And in my layer stack, I'm just gonna create a curvature node. So Mari 4.6 offers real-time curvature. While this looks a bit artifacty, this is actually quite sufficient for use with these smart masks. So you can set your general curvature here, but in general, you want to have it at a very low value because we're gonna generate wider curvatures automatically with the setup tool. Using this, you don't need to bake anything anymore and you just need to have an ambient occlusion. So let's jump into the setup tool and see what we can do with this. As we've seen earlier, the smart mask setup tool dialog will usually pop up the first time you import a smart mask into your project. You can also access the dialog in the node graph via the right mouse click masks smart mask setup tool. If I have a selection in my node graph that contains a preset that can be automatically set up, the dialog would pop up. If I do not have a selection with something that can be set up automatically, I would get a message saying that no valid node was found. You can also access the dialog via the smart mask shelf or via the mask shelf in general. The first button down here will allow you to set up your project to use with smart masks. So you do not actually have to have a smart mask imported into your project for this dialog to appear and you can prepare your project for the time where you actually need to use it. The second button here is the same as the option that we had in the node graph by choosing the smart mask setup tool. So it will sample your selection and then open the dialog if a valid selection is found with something that can be set up automatically. These options are also available if you launch the mask shelf in layer stack context. So this first option will bake maps so you are ready to use them when you need smart masks. And the second option will sample your current layer selection and if a valid layer selection is found with something that can be set up, the dialog would also pop up. The purpose of the mask preset setup tool is to connect channels to your smart masks and create necessary data for you. When you first launch the dialog, usually you will be asked to select a channel or set it to ignore for one of these baked maps. This is something you have to do, so you cannot go past this unless you set them to ignore. Extension Pack will try to automatically populate your channel selection with the appropriate channels. So here, I already have an ambient occlusion and a curvature pass pre-populated. So in this case, I just need to press process and not make any changes in this dialog. The pre-population of these dropdowns happens based on naming convention. Naming convention can be set in the preferences and we will cover this in detail in a later part of this tutorial. If I make a channel selection and press on process, if the channel name does not correspond to the existing naming convention, I'll get presented with this dialog where I can easily change the preferences to adopt to my new naming convention. So in this case, I'm informed that the curvature is not in accordance with the naming convention that is set in the preferences. So I can continue and make no changes to the preferences. I can change the preferences only for this current project or for all future projects. If I opt to make a change for this project or the future projects, the next time this dialog will open, the appropriate dropdown will be pre-populated again with the new channel selection that matches the naming convention you've chosen. The dialog is a dynamic dialog, meaning it will list only items that are actually still missing. In this case, I dragged in my object, or my smart mask, into the node graph, and because the ambient occlusion was already found, I'm only asked to provide a curvature map. If I refresh a preset, so for example, I go via the mask setup tool, in this case, all channels are shown again. I can see here on the admin occlusion, I have this little green icon indicating that there's already an existing connection on this slot, so I do not need to make a change in this case. However, I can set this either to ignore, so I can ignore the connection and leave it as is, or I can disconnect the existing connection. In this case, it would just disconnect the existing connection and not hook up any new connection. Apart from the baked maps, such as the admin occlusion and the curvature, Smart masks can also be driven by other options. For example, we can define a thickness or a height map. And in addition, we can also use a texture override. These are the maps specified under the other maps section. Usually these are set to ignore by default, so they are not required to be set up to have your smart masks work correctly. However, if you want to, for example, provide a height map to use in your calculation, then this is the place to do it. One of the tasks that the setup tool executes is to create variations of your original curvature map. Once the processing is finished, in your channels palette, you will find a series of different channels. So here we have our original curvature map that we provided to the setup tool. Then we have a curvature sharp, which is identical with the curvature, but is a flattened version of it. And then we have the different blurred variations. We have a soft blurred version, 
a large blurred version, huge, etc. If we look into the node graph, all these channels are placed into a geobase background. So here we have a backdrop and all the channels are in here and are connected to the smart masks via radio nodes. So if I toggle the radio nodes, you can see all these connections that are made to these channels and then hidden away using the radio node system. The creation of all these blurred channels is controlled by the generated map section in the setup tool. Usually you want to leave this at auto generate from curvature to have the tool do all the heavy lifting for you and make the setup as easy as possible. If you refresh an existing smart mask that already has connections, you will find a link directly to the channel that has been used already. Inside of these smart masks, the curvature can be used to set the influence of each of these blurred maps. I could widen the curvature, I can change the intensity, and define the general contribution of each of these blurred maps. Options to control the blur width for the generated channels are available under the curvature options of the tool. Usually, this is set to set blur relative to curvature resolution, which samples settings from the preferences of the tool, which are set up in a way that should automatically produce the best results for your smart masks. However, depending on your requirements or your model, you might want to change this here so you can make changes to the blur radius and the blur amount and set a custom resolution. We'll cover this in a second. One thing that is important is that your provided curvature should always have patch bleeding applied. Basically, there should be a bleeding or a texture dilation already in your texture. If you do not have a curvature with dilation or texture bleeding, you can tick on the apply patch bleeding and the tool will do this process for you automatically. I've kept this option disabled by default because I have no way of knowing if your supplied curvature channel already has patch bleeding or texture dilation applied. So if it already had patch bleeding, I would just redo the whole process, which would add processing time. So I'm keeping this disabled for now and leaving it to you to take it on if you need it. If you want to manually edit these blur settings at the bottom, you need to first untick the set blur relative to curvature resolution, which will activate these fields. The blur amount you usually want to keep at 1. The blur radius is an incrementally increasing value depending on the size of the required blur. So here the curvature fine is at a radius of 16 and the curvature huge is at a radius of 512. It is important to realize that this is a fixed radius. So it is depending on the resolution of the originally supplied curvature. Here I have a curvature channel. This curvature channel is at a 2K resolution, so 2048 times 2048. Having a 512 blur radius would, in this case, blur across one fourth of the image resolution. However, if I supply a much larger file, for example a 4K file, 512 would only blur across one eighth of the texture resolution. So the curvature huge would give you much less range in this case. Because having large blur radius values increases the computation time quite a lot, there's also a resolution option here. By default, this is set at 100% here, meaning that the duplicated channels, the curvature huge, will also remain at 2048 times 2048 and then a 512 pixel radius for the blur is applied. If I set this to 50%, the resulting channel will be at 1K resolution, so 1024 times 1024. In this case, the 512 pixel radius would, for the same computational result or the same computational time as on a 2K map, give me much wider blur. Because usually the smart masks at higher blur width do not require the same kind of level of detail and quality in the maps, it is totally acceptable and highly recommended to reduce the resolution slowly when the curvature gets blurred more and more. Before you dive into all these settings though, I would always recommend you leave the blur at the native resolution so the resolution and settings I set up for you. So just supply your baked maps and press the process. Next. I want to look at the many customization options this tool offers. You can find its preferences in the lower right hand corner. Here we have a very large preferences dialog and we will cover all these settings now. First let's scroll down a little bit and we will find a section called automatic blur settings. This is what we just talked about. If the set blur relative to curvature resolution is set, I will sample the values defined here. For each of the curvature channels, I have different variations of settings available. So for example, if my curvature is a 2K map, I will sample the 2K row. So here, for the curvature fine, I would set a blur amount of 1, a blur radius of 16, and a resolution for the resulting channels of 100%. If I scroll down to the curvature huge, for a 2K map input, I would set a 
resolution, oh, sorry, a blur amount of 1, a blur radius of 512, and the resolution would be at 100%. So you can see in these disabled settings here, these are exactly the values we find in these settings, which the tool would use if set blur relative to curvature resolution is turned on. Let's scroll back up to the top of the preferences dialog. The first group is a reporting dialog and specifies what kind of reporting you want, how much time that things took. So for example, we can say, okay, give me a report dialog if the processing took longer than three minutes. With the checkbox set here, however, I will always print out the report to the Python console, no matter how long it takes. The next settings group determines if your setup mask preset dialog is shown no matter what. As we've seen in the beginning of the tutorial, importing a smart mask into a project where geobakes are already available will not prompt the dialog to appear. Instead, the smart mask will be fully automatically set up for you with no further interaction necessary. You can always force open the dialog by holding down control while importing a preset, which will always show the dialog even if all necessary connections could be automatically made for you. Ticking the always open channel selection window in the preferences will do the same thing and always show this channel selection dialog no matter what. The channel naming preference group allows you to set your naming convention for channels. Here we can see, for example, the curvature sharp, fine, soft, etc. naming conventions. If we look at our channel names in the channels list or in the channels palette, we can see these are the names of the channels that the tool will generate for you. The names defined here are also used to pre-populate the dropdowns of the dialog. If I have a global name set for the curvature called curvature, if a name or a channel with this name is found, the curvature field in the dialog will already be populated once you open it. We can also set a project-specific naming convention for this, which is different than the global one. Again, this is something we covered very early on in this tutorial when we set a project-specific or global naming convention because we had a dialog popping up that showed us this option. Last, we can set if we actually want to pre-populate the dropdowns with names if they're found in the naming convention or if we always want to manually assign the channels. Under the no port aliases group, we define the port name triggers that prompt the mask setup tool to open. If you import a preset via the mask shelf system or manually launch the smart mask setup tool via a node or layer selection, the tool will only open if one of these triggers is met. So if one of the port names matches the name of port names defined in this list. By adding names to these trigger fields, you can also make the smart mask setup tool work with your own presets. So if you create your own node gizmos or materials that have nodes or ports exposed that match these names, the smart mask setup tool would also open. So you're not limited to the naming convention that I use in the mask presets that come with my extension pack. In the bottom section of the node port aliases, you can define up to five different user port names. Mari extension pack comes with some predefined user port names by default. User port names can be useful to utilize the mask setup dialog for nodes other than the smart masks. One example would be height blending. Mari extension pack ships with a height blend node that can be used exclusively in the node graph since it requires node input connections to be made that are usually not supported by the layer stack. In the case of the height blend node, we also have multiple outputs to choose from. With user port names defined for the mask setup tool, we can start to utilize nodes that would usually be limited to the node graph from within the layer stack. If I launch the mask shelf from the layer stack, you can find the height plan preset in the procedurals tab of the shelf. If I import the preset, the mask setup tool will be launched, since the node's input ports match the defined user ports in its preferences. First, we need to set which output of the node we wish to connect to in the layer stack. In the main dialog, we can then specify input channels for the ports of the node. As you can see, this gives you way more capabilities within the layer stack. The last setting available in the mask preset preferences simply defines the backdrop name that is used to place the baked maps in. So here you can change the name that is used, and the next time you bake maps, a different backdrop name will be used. You can always save and re-import your settings using these two buttons at the bottom, so you can store your presets in an ini file and we import them or share them with other users. This concludes this tutorial and I hope it gave you a very good understanding how the mask preset setup tool actually works and what it can do.